Hi, in this lecture we're going to continue on with our discussion of the partition function of the ideal gas. And in this one, we're going to finish up by deriving the Sacker tetrode equation for the entropy of a monatomic ideal gas. So here comes part two. And if you haven't seen part one, you're really going to need it before you go on. Okay, so I'm going to start off this by working um, problem 43 in chapter six of, um, of our textbook Thermal Physics by Schroeder. And so uh, I feel that this is a really important example for discussing everything that comes on. So here, here we go. Let's read this one together. Some advanced textbooks define entropy by the formula. S is equal to negative K times the summation over all states of the probability of the state times the natural log of the probability of the state, where the sum runs over all microstates accessible to the system and P of S, the probability of the state, is the probability of the system being in microstate S. So part A, for an isolated system, the probability of being in a particular state S is 1 over omega, of course that's the multiplicity here, for all accessible states S. Show that in this case, the preceding formula reduces to our familiar definition of entropy. Now part B, for a system in thermal equilibrium with a reservoir at a temperature T, the probability of a state is equal to 1 over Z, the partition function, times E to the minus ES over KT. Show that in this case as well, the preceding formula agrees with what we already know about entropy. Okay, so here we go. Um, let's do part A first. So in this one, the probability of the state was 1 over the multiplicity omega. So let's plug in for that. Plugging into this formula, S is equal to minus K um, times the summation of, what we'll have there is for the probability of the state, that's 1 over omega, and then the natural log of the probability of the state will be times natural log of 1 over omega, okay? Now, uh, because of the rules of logarithms, the log of 1 over omega is equal to minus log omega. So we can plug that in, and we end up with minus k times the summation of negative 1 over omega times log of omega. The minus signs cancel front and out, uh, outside and inside of the summation. They cancel. And then you just get um, the summation over all the states of k log omega over omega. Now, the multiplicity is a number that will not change for any particular state. It's the total multiplicity of the system. So you can think of it as just a number. So you can pull that number outside of your summation, and then you're just summing over all of your states, right? So you end up with S is equal to K, natural log of omega over omega, times the summation of all your states. And then all that's left over the summation is just one. You've pulled everything outside of the summation other than one. So when you sum over all the states, you get the total number of microstates, right? Which is just the multiplicity of omega. So that means that you end up with k log omega over omega times omega, which is k log omega, which is our definition of entropy in the first place, okay? Now, problem 43b. We're going to do the same proof, but now we're going to use the um, definition of the probability using our Boltzmann factors and our partition functions. The probability of a state is 1 over z times e to the minus es over kt, where es is the energy of the state, k is Boltzmann's constant, and t is the temperature of the system. Okay, so plugging in for those things, um, s is equal to minus k times the summation of the states, the probability of the state times the natural log of the probability of the state. I'm going to leave the first probability of the state alone. You'll see why. Um, it just makes the writing a little easier. And then I'm just going to worry about the part that I plug in for the natural log. The natural log of 1 over z times e to the minus es over kt. Okay. Now when you multiply things that are in the argument of a logarithm, it's the same as adding or subtracting the, the logarithms. So what I've got there is that it would be the same thing as saying the natural log of 1 over z plus the natural log of e to the minus es over kt, right? And then the natural log of 1 over z is equal to the negative natural log of z. So combining all those ideas into the next step, I end up with s is equal to minus k times the summation over all the states of the probability of the state times the natural log of e to the minus energy of the state over kt minus the natural log of z. Now the natural log of an expon exponential is just the argument of the exponential. So that means that we end up with s is equal to minus k times the summation over all the states of the probability of the state times 
the energy of the negative energy of the state e sub s divided by kt minus the natural log of z. All right. That's a lot of minus signs. So we can just cancel them all out. The minus sign on the outside cancels out the ones on the inside. Um, and so we just end up with s is equal to k sum of the probability times es over kt plus log z. All right. Now, we can do a little bit of simplification here. I can pull, um, for example, this probability, probability of the state times ES over KT. I can plug the, uh, pull the 1 over KT out of that summation term, okay? And also, if I have the sum of A plus B, that would be the same as the sum of A plus the sum of B. So that's what I've done here. I've broken it out into two summations, okay? So messing around with that first term and pulling it into two summations, I end up with 1 over t times the sum of the states times the probability of the state times the energy of the state plus k times the natural log of z times the sum of the probability of the states. All right, now, the sum of the probability of all the states is just 1. That's our normalization condition, right? If you have a whole bunch of different states, the probability that it's in one of those states is 100%, right? One the probability of 1. So the sum over s of the probability of the state is 1. And this right here, this sum of the states of the probability of the state times the energy of the state, that's our definition of how to find an average. So if you take that summation over S, probability of S times ES, that's just the average value of ES. So that's the average energy per state. So that means that we can write S then um, as E bar over T, where E bar is the average energy and T is the temperature, plus K times the natural log of Z. Okay, now... Taking that um, uh, equation and putting it at the top of this slide, we can multiply through by t, and then we have st is equal to e bar plus kt log z. And then we can rearrange our equation a little bit. e bar minus st is equal to minus kt log z. And now recognize that e bar minus st is just the Helmholtz free energy. That's our definition of F, our Helmholtz free energy. Now, it says E bar, which is usually the symbol for the average energy of a particular state. But remember, we started off with all of this being over all the states. So the average energy here in internal energy is equal, okay? So we can write that E bar minus ST is the same as U minus ST or U minus TS. And that's our Helmholtz free energy. So what we've done is derived an alternative definition for our Helmholtz free energy F and it would be negative kt times the natural log of the partition function. Now we're going to use that here in a minute to derive our sacker tetrode equation. I'd like to point out that what um, Schroeder does is a little different from what a lot of texts do. Um, what some texts do is they start with the definition of entropy from that problem in 43, and then they derive the expression from the Helmholtz free energy. But your text sort of assumed that this expression for the Helmholtz free energy was true and asked you to verify it, okay? And kind of backdoor that derivation of the Helmholtz free energy. But tomato, tomato, we ended up in the same place, okay? But if you're in a different textbook, just realize that the approach of that text might be slightly different. Okay, so... Back in chapter 5 of Schroeder's text, we dealt with the free energies, and um, we talked about the uh, thermodynamic identity rewritten in terms of the other free energies and not just the internal energy. So to remind you, um, remember that your thermodynamic identity is du is equal to TDS minus PDV plus mu dn. Okay? Now, if you take this definition for the Helmholtz free energy and you make a differential out of it, then that would be df is equal to du minus tds minus sdt. Now, if you plug in your thermodynamic identity du into that expression for df, then you end up with df is tds minus pdv plus mu dn minus tds minus sdt. And you get some things canceling out. This tds and the minus tds cancel out. And so you end up with df is minus pdv plus mu dn minus sdt. Okay, so that was our thermodynamic identity in terms of the Helmholtz free energy, okay? Now, from this thermodynamic identity in terms of the Helmholtz free energy, you can derive some useful partial derivatives. One of those is that the entropy is the negative partial of F with respect to T, holding the volume and the number of particles constant, okay? So that's the one that we're going to use right now. That's the one that we're picking on to find our Sacker-Tetrode equation, 
All right. So S is equal to the minus partial of F with respect to T, holding V and N constant. Now we can use that and plug in our new definition of the Helmholtz free energy there. F is equal to minus KT times the natural log of the partition function. So then we end up with minus partial of T of negative KT log V. Okay, so let's plug in what we had for our partition function from our part one lecture, okay, into this expression, and then find our entropy. So that's the partial with respect to T. The minus signs there are canceled from the negative partial and the negative take key. They cancel out. So then you end up with a partial with respect to T of KT times the natural log of Z, which is N times the log of V plus the log of Z internal minus the log of N minus the log of the quantum volume V sub Q plus 1. Okay. Now we have basically a product rule situation here. We have one function, which is our KT, multiplied times this other function, which is what's shown here in the curly brackets. Okay. So applying our product rule, that derivative would be the derivative of the kt part, which is kn times log v plus log z internal minus log n minus the log of the quantum volume plus 1, and now plus nkt times the partial derivative with respect to t of the stuff in the curly brackets. Now within the curly brackets, there's certain things that are not dependent upon the temperature explicitly. The um, volume isn't, and the uh, number of particles isn't, and of course 1 isn't which just leaves a couple of terms, namely the log of Z internal and the log of the quantum volume, that do contain T explicitly or have temperature dependence. So that means that we have plus NKT times the partial with respect to T of log Z internal minus log of the quantum volume. Okay? Now, another thing to remember is that where we want to end up is our sacker tetrode equation. The sacker tetrode equation is the equation for a monatomic ideal gas. Monatomic ideal gases like helium, argon, neon, things like that, okay? So they're not diatomic. They're not bonded to another um, atom. And so their internal rotational and vibrational states are non-existent, okay? <laughs> so we can ignore the log of Z internal terms um, if we're just in pursuit of our Sacker tetrode equation. Of course, if you're dealing with something like diatomic oxygen or nitrogen present in air, you can't ignore them but to derive the Sacker tetrode equation, we can. Okay, so I'm going to do that from now on. All right, so that leaves me with S is equal to Kn times the log of V minus log N minus log of the quantum volume plus 1 minus NKT times the partial with respect to T of the log of the quantum volume. Now, let's think about how to handle that log of the quantum volume partial. So the quantum volume um, from the previous lecture, part 1, is h over the square root of 2 pi mkt cubed, okay? So we can break that out into some things that have t and things that don't have t. So the things that don't have t are h over the square root of 2 pi mk cubed, and then the thing that does have t is, of course, t to the minus 3 halves. So that means that the log of our quantum volume, if we take that and plug it in, would be 3 times the natural log of h over the square root of 2 pi mk minus 3 halves natural log of t. Okay, so I've just broken this into two parts, and remember that when you multiply things inside the logarithm, it's the same as adding or subtracting them, depending on how they're related. So there we go. That's what we've got. Now, if you take the partial of that expression, log of the quantum volume with respect to t, the constant stuff, that just goes away. The h, 2 pi, mk, that, that goes away because it's not explicitly dependent upon t. And so that just leaves us with the derivative of this part, which would be negative 3 over 2t. Okay? So now I can plug that into my expression for s. And s is equal to kn times the log of v minus log n minus log of the quantum volume plus 1, now plus mkt times 3 over 2t. The minus sign cancels out from in front of the partial, and then uh, once you take that log of the quantum volume, that cancels out, so it's plus. And now I can combine that into... S is equal to NK times the log of V minus log of N minus log of the quantum volume plus 5 halves. Right? Now, I can combine that even further, right? Um, and that would give me S is equal to NK times the log of V over N times the quantum volume plus 5 halves. All right? Now, the Sacker-Tetrode equation is shown here. 
Okay, it was shown in an earlier chapter, but not derived from first principles as it is now. S is equal to NK times the log of V over N times 4 pi MU over 3 NH squared to the 3 halves plus 5 halves. Okay, now I think you can see that if you plug in for what the quantum volume is and just do a little bit of substitution and a little bit of algebra, you'll be able to get from the top equation to the full Sackler tetrate equation. I got you 99% of the way, and so what I usually do is assign the last 1% for homework. So you're going to prove those are equivalent. Okay? All right, that's it. We've gone from our very beginning chapters um, where we were sort of introducing this idea of entropy, and now we've gotten to the point where we've developed a formalism powerful enough that we can derive a very complicated equation now for our Sackler tetrode relationship the entropy of a monatomic ideal gas. So I hope you feel properly accomplished because that's an amazing journey, an amazing trip to take. I'll see you in class.